Hey guys and welcome back. We're going to cover a few questions today off the mathematical knowledge portion of the ASVAB. Now remember, the mathematical knowledge portion is not so much word problems as it is straight mathematical content. So without further ado, let's go ahead and dive right in. Find the value of 4 cubed times 3 squared. Well, anytime you have something raised to a power, you're multiplying this number by itself that many times. So 4 cubed here is just 4 times 4 times 4. And then we're multiplying that answer by 3 squared, which is just going to be 3 times 3. Well, 4 times 4 is 16 times another 4 is going to end up giving us 64. 3 times 3 is just going to give us 9. So now we got to multiply those two together. Remember, Remember, no calculator here. 9 times 4 is going to give us 36. And 9 times 6 is going to end up giving us 54. Plus 3 is going to give us 57. So the final answer, 576, which is answer B. Round 2 for this guy right here. Let's do this multiplication first because it's in parentheses. So 2 times 3 is going to give me 6. And 6 squared, 6 times 6, is going to give me 36. So on this one, we're looking at answer D. It's time to get rolling. So number three here says, what is the greatest common factor of 42 and 28? So what is a greatest common factor? So there are two common things. One is the greatest common factor, the GCF, and the other is the least common denominator, which is the, like, counterpart to this guy. Greatest common factor is the biggest number that divides both of these evenly. So there's lots of ways we can go about doing this. We could break these down to all the numbers that divide them and see which one they have in common. In this case, though, they're giving you a big hint right off the bat by giving you the possible answers. So essentially, I can just start at the largest here, and once I find one that divides both, that will be my answer. So in this case, 21 does indeed divide 42, but it is too large to be dividing 28, so 21's out. Let's take a look at 14. 14 goes into 28 twice, and 14 goes into 42. Does it go into 42? I think, let's see if we multiply by 3. 4 times 3 is 12, carry the 1, 3 times that. So it does indeed go into 42 three times. So 14 is going to be the largest number that divides both. Our answer here is C. So number four says prime factor of the number 48 and write the prime factorization using exponential notation. Let's talk about what some of these things are. So when it says to prime factor someone, something or to write the prime factorization, they're saying to divide this number into as many prime numbers as possible. It turns out that every number only has one list of these like smallest primes that are going into it. And remember what's prime? It means it can't be divided by anything else. The the best way I know to do this is to just keep dividing by 2 until you can't anymore and then move on to the next numbers you can divide by until all the numbers can't be divided by anything but those numbers and the number 1. So let's start off dividing by 2. 48 divided by 2 is going to be 24. 24 divided by 2 is going to bring me down to 12. 12 divided by 2 is going to bring me down to 6. 6 divided by 2 is going to bring me down to 3, and 3 can't be divided anymore, so I'm going to go ahead and put a 3 in there. Now, when it says exponential notation, it's saying to write these in terms of being 2 raised to a power instead. So in this case, I have 2 times itself 4 times, and I have 3 times itself 1 time. So the prime factorization here would be 2 to the 4th times 3, which is answer A. I don't know, is this one meant to be a joke or what? Number five says evaluate 18 minus three times the quantity five minus two. This is your basic order of operations here. So that means we're doing the items in parentheses first. Five minus two is going to give me three. Three times negative three is going to give me negative nine because we multiply before we do the subtraction. So really our final answer here should be whatever 18 minus nine is, which is just nine. So our answer is C. Two for one. Let's go ahead. It says perform the indicated operation. So we have a positive 8 minus positive 2 minus negative 7. Well, minus negative just makes it positive, all right? So we got 8 minus a positive 2, which is going to give us 6. Then minus negative makes plus 7. So 6 plus 7. Well, 6 plus 7 is 13, so our answer is going to be C. Now, here's the deal with these. You can see a bunch of these coming up. 
These are testing how quickly you can go through things without a calculator. So don't freak out and think like, oh, that's so easy. It is meant to be a pure speed trial for these questions. Let's go ahead and take a look at number seven. It says negative one to the one hundredth power times negative two times the third power. So what's the deal with this one hundredth power? Well, it's actually just trying to tell us if this number is going to be even or odd, because if I take negative one, just to the first power, that's negative one. Negative one to the second power means I do negative one times negative one, giving me a positive one. To the third power would be multiplying that by another negative one, making it negative again. Then to the fourth power would make it positive again. So it just bounces back and forth between positive and negative. Notice that the two and the four mark is when you get these positive ones, meaning that all even numbers are the ones that end up being positive. So this will end up being a positive one. We got negative two to the third power. Well, negative two times negative two gives us a positive 4 times another negative 2 is going to make it negative 8. So I got 1 times negative 8 gives me negative 8 for a final answer of B. Looking at the second one here, we have a positive 12 times negative 4 divided by negative 2 times negative 8. Now here's the deal. We're essentially reducing here first. So 12 and 2, well, 12 divided by 2 is just 6, and that leaves us at the 1, but we still have that negative out front. We got 4 and 8 is, well, 4 goes into 8 two times, so that reduces right there. The negatives also can be canceled out. So we got 6 over negative 2. Well, 6 divided by negative 2 is going to be negative 3. Our final answer is A. Let's take a look at number 9. Oh, no, it's fractions. So... When you are adding or subtracting fractions, you cannot do that until they have the same number on the bottom of the fraction. So how do you go about doing this? Well, the easiest way is usually to uh, multiply both the top and number by the same thing on a fraction until you get to where both of the bottoms are the same. Now, in this case, it will be easy because I know that I can multiply 3 by 3 to get it to 9. But if there is not an easy way to just multiply by one number to get one of them up to the other, then you have to multiply them by both by a number until you can get them to the same thing on the bottom. Now, in this case, I'm going to rewrite the 8 over 9. But 1 over 3, here's how this works. You're allowed to multiply by 3 on the bottom as long as you multiply by 3 on the top. Why is that? Because 3 divided by 3 is equal to 1. And whenever you do a number times 1, it just gives you that number back again. So when you multiply by 3 over 3, you're just multiplying by 1, so you're not actually doing anything. So 1 times 3 on the top, because you multiply straight across, is going to give us 3. And 3 times 3 is going to give us 9. Remember, we're subtracting the two of these. So now that we have the same number on the bottom, we can just subtract across the top. 8 minus 3 is going to give me 5 meaning that our final answer here is 5 over 9, which is A. Ugh, number 10, what a pain in the butt. Multiplying mixed numbers is never fun because in order to do this, you have to like, transfer these into improper fractions first, meaning not having a whole number out front, but just having an improper fraction means a full number on top and then that number on bottom. So how do you do that? Well, the fastest way is to just multiply your whole number by whatever's on the bottom and then add that to the top. So because essentially you're adding like 4 over 4, four times to this situation. So four times four is 16, plus that one is 17. So we put that on the top, we keep the four on the bottom. Three times three is nine, plus two is gonna give me 11 over three. Now, we have to do this because in order to multiply fractions, you multiply straight across with the fraction, which you can't do with those mixed numbers. So now we got 17 times 11. Well, 17 times 10 is 170, plus another 17 that gets us up to that 11th one is going to end up giving me 187 over 4 times 3 is going to be 12. Now, I'm not good enough without a calculator to just be like, oh, how many times does 12 go into this? I don't know. But looking at my answers, I know 4 times 3 is 12, so the answer here has to be at least quite a bit bigger than that. So I'm going to assume that it's going to be 15 in some fraction. So I'm going to go ahead and say, what is 12 times 15? And then we'll see what the difference is up here. Well, 10 times 15 is 150. And then I have two more of them because of being 12, not 10. So if I have two more of these guys, that's another 30. So that's going to bring us up to 180. So now, knowing that, I know that 12 times 15 is 180. So if I take out 15 of these 12 over 12s, it's going to leave me with 180, well, 187 minus 180, which is 7 
over 12. So our final answer should be 15, 7 over 12, which it looks like is C. Hey guys, that's all we're going to cover for today. But remember, you can always click on any of these videos over here to help you keep studying for your next attempt on the ABVAP.